Management Systems Analyst here at DWD Technology Group. Today we are going to review how to add a user-defined field to sales order and sales order invoice data entry screens in SAGE 100. The first step to adding a field to SAGE 100 is really the decision of what you need to record in order to get the result you're looking for. A lot of times the field that you add, you're adding because you want to create a report or be able to find data. In this example, I am going to add a field that is a drop-down for trade shows. Because every order that I get from a trade show, I would like to be able to select the trade show the order came from so that later on I may report on how many sales actually come from going to a trade show. So in order to do that, I have to be an administrator of Sage 100 ERP. I should see a folder on my modules menu called Custom Office. I expand that, I go into Main, and I go into User Defined Field and Table Maintenance. Clicking on that will open a window that shows you every module within Sage 100. It also will list recent, so the most recent tables you've been to. So first we're going to start with adding it to just our normal sales order entry. So I'm going to go into sales order and I'm going to locate the SO sales order header table. SO sales order header. I'm going to right click and choose to edit the fields of that table. Notice I have quite a few already in my system, but I'm going to go ahead and add a new one. And I'm going to call this one Trade Show. Okay. Notice the field name changed to UDF underscore Trade Show. That is how Sage 100 uh, designates any field you create with the first three letters starting as UDF. The description is the label we will see on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it Trade Show. I'm going to have it be a manual entry. They are going to manually select. Okay, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to look at it and say I agree with my description. I want it to be a drop box. I want it to drop down and let them choose. Okay, any drop box is of data type string. Notice if we choose multi-line, which is really just a text box, I can then choose numeric or date. And my options change down below. But in this case, I want it to be a Dropbox. I'm going to make it a 25 character length field. Okay. And then I'm going to click on the validation tab and I'm going to add to my list. So in this case, maybe I go to two trade shows a year, a spring and a fall. So I would add into this list spring 2013, spring 2014, fall, 2013, fall, 2014. Now, notice that the order I put them in, I may decide that, you know, I don't want the spring sticker because this drop down when it drops would show you the exact order you put them in here. So let's go ahead and take spring out here. And let's put it right here for the 2014 show. There's the fall, let's put spring 2015 because we know we're going next year as well. Okay. So now my list is spring, fall, spring, fall, spring, fall each year. Okay. Notice the required field. That is, you require users to select this field and select an option. In this case, I would not want this field to be required because not every order I get comes from a trade show. I'm going to review my settings and I'm going to click OK. I'm also going to click OK here after I've verified that it showed up in my list of fields. Now, here you must have everyone out of Sage 100 to add a user-defined field to the sales order table. 
to proceed, I click OK. And it's saying that there is something in process in the following company. What does that mean? Well, that means somebody's got something open. And it's trying to tell you, like I said, to get everybody out. In this case, what it has is I have the sales order entry screen open on my machine. Let me close that, click retry. Sage will go through and update all the required tables and views. It should just take a couple more seconds. Okay. So we've added this new field to our sales order header table. We do need to edit the screen our users use. So under Custom Office Main, I go to Customizer Selection. I locate Sales Order. Scroll down, and I locate Sales Order Entry. And then I locate Panel Header, P Header. Right click and edit the panel. Now when this comes up, what you will see is, do you want to create a panel for just a user and just a company, or do you want it for all or all? Okay. In this case, I have custom panels already set up, custom screens, so I'm going to modify my screen that is for all users for my ABC company. I'll click OK. So now I see the screen that we would add the field to. On the left-hand side is my customizer, so I'm going to go ahead and click Add a Field. When I click Add a Field, it will go out and locate all my custom fields that are available for this screen. They will display here in a moment for me to select the field I want to add to the screen. I'm going to go ahead and draw it on here. Notice it's looking, it's looking. What can we add there? All right, so here are all the fields that I have that are custom. But really the one I want is my new one, my trade show. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now, over here on the screen, I see trade show, and I can see it's a drop-down. Okay? I may want to put it more over here, slide this over here. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and close. It's going to say, do you want to save? Yes, I do. And we're going to go ahead and close our customizer screen. And now we're going to open sales order entry. Okay, let's look at a sales order. Now we have our trade shows selectable. So if our user creates a new sales order, they can come over here, look through our list, and say this came from our fall 2014 trade show. Clicking accept saves the sales order, and now we have it in our sales order entry table. So the next step to that is, what if we want that to be available on our invoice entry screen? And if we invoice a sales order that already has it in their sales order, we want that information to come to the invoice as well. So in order to do that, we must navigate back to Custom Office Main and go to our user-defined field and table maintenance. 
inside here, we locate our sales order module again. This time we want the SO invoice header. So we locate SO invoice header, we right click, we choose edit fields, click OK. Notice I have a few custom fields already. I'm going to go ahead and add a new one. I'm going to call it trade show as well. Okay. Manual entry. Click OK. I made it a Dropbox. I made it 25 links. I want to keep this information the exact same. Okay. I want to give it the same validation list. Correct. So we want to type in spring 2013, fall 2013, spring 2014, spring, fall 14, spring, and fall 2015. So now we have the exact same validation list. We have the same attributes. It is a Dropbox of a string type the maximum link of 25. Now the key difference here is on the invoice, we want it to come from the sales order if the sales order has the information. So this data source tab allows us to do that. So here is the different objects we have. Okay. So if I create a SO invoice and I say looking at the sales order number, I want you to bring in UDF trade show. So this is going to tell it the key is my sales order number. If I select a sales order, I want you to pull in the UDF trade show. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. Our list of fields, it is there. Click OK. Once again, everybody must be out. We click OK. We wait as it updates the tables. And while this is updating, I always like to mention when you're adding new fields, really think about the different types of fields that you need to add. Um, some people would just add a free form text box that says trade show. Well, if you go to write a report, sometimes those free form trade show text box is hard to search, it's hard to group on because what one user types may not match what another user types. So in this example, this is perfect for a drop down where you give your users only certain selections, which in turn when you go to do reporting or searching on it, you know exactly what to look for in order to get the result you want. All right, that's finished updating. We're going to go into the customizer so we can add it to our invoice data entry screen. So sales order. Okay, we want the sales order invoice entry, and we're going to go to our header panel, P header. Once again, I have my own all companies, but maybe in this case, I only want the ABC users, company users, to see it. So I would say all users, but only for company ABC, not all of them. Okay, so here I would click my little button to add a field. I would draw it on the screen here. Okay, my selection will populate. We're going to pick trade show. Okay, I may better position it where I want it. Okay, and then I'll click close and save. And then we will go ahead and close this screen. And now we will go into sales order invoice data entry. Notice we can see our trade show down here. We have an invoice out there. And now I could pick where that came from. Since we did the data source tab, notice if I select a sales order, I 
that sales order was the one we set fall 2014 on, so automatically updated the invoice to have the same trade show. So today we looked at adding a user-defined field, also called a UDF, to sales order and sales order invoice data entry screens, and how to source the data from the sales order to the invoice. Please watch our other YouTube videos. Uh, check out our website to find um, other useful tips and tricks such as this. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.